part three in the ongoing series, Western Sephardim Atlantic Creoles, the Afro-American and Latino Portuguese Jews in the Americas from 1492 to the present. In this video, we're going to explore the different ethnic divisions and history of the Sephardim. Jewish ethnic divisions Jewish ethnic divisions refer to many distinctive communities within the world's ethnically Jewish population. Although considered one self-identifying ethnicity, there are distinct ethnic subdivisions among Jews. What do you mean by Jewish ethnic? divisions. What is the definition of the word ethnic? But since we are talking about a group, it's better to particularly find out the definition of the term ethnic group. An ethnic group or ethnicity is a named social category of people who identify with each other on the basis of shared attributes that distinguish them from other groups, such as a common set of traditions, ancestry, language, history, society, culture, nation, religion, or social treatment within their residing area. Ethnicities is sometimes used interchangeably with the term nation, particularly in cases of ethnic nationalism, and is separate from, but related to the concept of races. We want to see if the term ethnic also applies to the different Sephardi groups. And if so, what ethnic classification or category would the subgroup of the Western Sephardi fit under? But before we go into that, I want to define the Western Sephardi a little more so we can understand who they were in 1492 and who they are today. In Jewish history, there are going to be words and terms that we must understand to better enlighten ourselves on this subject matter. So we are going to go back to the original picture or image of the Creole woman, Jada Pickett Smith and Alexandria Casio Cortez and we're going to read what a particular publication published about the history of Alexandria Ocasio Cortez to further our education on this subject matter. Ocasio Cortez claims Jewish ancestry. Democratic Congresswoman elect Alexandria Ocasio Cortez claims her family is descended from Sephardic Jews forced to convert to Catholicism. A very long time ago, generations and generations ago, my family consisted of Sephardic Jews, Ocasio Cortez said. The story goes during the Spanish Inquisition. So many people were forced to convert on the exterior to Catholicism, but on the interior continued to practice their faith and continued to be who they were, even though they were pressured to not be that on the outside world. Her family later fled to Puerto Rico to escape persecution, Ocasio Cortez said. Many of these secret Jews, dubbed the Anusim, coerced ones, emigrated to the Western Hemisphere, settling in colonies across what would become Latin America. Given the birth rate over the years, studies have estimated 
the number of descendants of these Jews at anywhere from 100 million to 150 million, and even some who claim there are as many as 200 million around the world descended from Spanish and Portuguese Jews. So let's look more into the identity of the Anusums. Sephardic Beni Anusum literally means children of the coerced converted Spanish Jews. The Jewish Agency for Israel estimates the Sephardic Beni Anusum population to number in the millions. Although they are the least prominent of Sephardic descendants, Sephardic Beni Anusums outnumber their Jewish integrated Sephardic Jewish counterparts, which consists of Eastern Sephardim, North African Sephardim, and the ex-converso Western Sephardim. But we're going to look into it and we're going to see, I'm going to show you that Beni Anusums are Western Sephardim. Listen very closely to this. 90% of Latin America's modern population having at least partial Iberian ancestry in the form of Criollos, Mestizos, and Mulattoes, you're going to find the Western Sephardim categorized as Criollos, Mestizos, and Mulattoes. Okay, so let's read on. The total population size of Sephardic Bini Anusum, 67.78 million. And this is an undercounting. Other studies have shown that the population is estimated to be at least 200 million. And that's undercounting. That's just the tip of the iceberg. I'm going to show that's just the tip of the iceberg. Okay, let me read on. It's not only several times larger. So the Sephardic Beni Anusum or the Western Sephardic are not only seven times, several times larger than the combined population of Jewish integrated Sephardic groups. So the Beni Anusum are larger than all the Sephardic groups combined, but also more than four times, four times the size of the total world Jewish population as a whole. So this is a group that's not really well known, but they are four times the size of the total world Jewish population as a whole. The other world population of Jewish communities, reading on, the later compasses Ashkenazi Jews, Mizrazi Jews, and various other small groups. So this unknown group that consists of Criollos, Mestizos, and Mulatto Jews are four times the size of the total world Jewish population. Now, I would like to show four images of Mestizos, Criollos, and Mulattoes. And now, I would like to present a short history of the Eastern Sephardic Jews. Eastern Sephardim are a distinctive subgroup of Sephardi Jews, mostly descended from families expelled in exile from Iberia as Jews in the 15th century following the Alhambra Decree of 1492 in Spain and the Decree of 1497 in Portugal. This branch of descendants of the Jews of Iberia settled in the Eastern Mediterranean. Eastern 
Eastern Sephardim settled mostly in various parts of the Ottoman Empire, which included areas in Western Asia, Middle East, Anatolia, the Balkans, and Southern Europe, plus Egypt. For centuries, these Jews made up the majority of the population of Salonika, now Thessaloniki, Greece, and were present in large numbers in Constantinople, now Istanbul, Turkey, and Sarajevo, in what is now Bosnia and Herzegovina, all of which were located in the Ottoman ruled parts of Europe. fourteen ninety two the other path there aren't many of us who don't know this date fourteen ninety two it was on the third of august of that year when this man christopher columbus went off looking for a trade route to the orient we know he found something else the western hemisphere. Our task is not to speak of the harm and the good that came with Spain's discovery of what they called the New World. But we can say the reason so many of us speak Spanish today can be traced to this voyage. But here's something you may not have known. The very same week that Columbus sailed from the port of Palos in Spain, the last of around 200,000 Spaniards were being thrown out of their country, expelled, simply because of their religion. They were not Catholics like Queen Isabella and King Ferdinand. They were the Jews of Spain. And they have been part of society here for 1,000 years. So, in the same week that Columbus sailed west to bring the language we speak today, the Jewish families of Spain fled in many directions to Portugal, to the Netherlands, and to many other places. But the majority of these Spaniards, they sailed east, across the Mediterranean. And who welcomed these refugees from intolerant Catholic Spain. The Muslims. Here is a portrait of the Ottoman Turkish Sultan Bayezid II. And he ruled an empire that stretched around the Mediterranean and up into the Balkans. The Sultan welcomed the Jews and more than 150,000 settled in these lands from Istanbul to Sarajevo and cities like Thessaloniki and Greece and Batolia and today's Macedonia in Sofia and Bulgaria, in Belgrade and Serbia, in the beautiful port city of Dubrovnik in Croatia, here in Sarajevo and Bosnia, Herzegovina. For 450 years, from 1492 until 1941, these Jews lived among Muslims and among Christians, both Catholics and Orthodox. These Spanish Jews 
would forever be known as the Sephardim. In Hebrew means Spain. They kept the language they had brought with them from Spain. Ladino or Judeo Espanol. Here we hear a Ladino speaker saying, The language is mostly Spanish, with some Hebrew and other words mixed in. But basically, if you are Spanish, you can understand Ladino, right? They dressed in the traditional styles they had brought from their homeland. And they sang of their love for the land that threw them out. Because they never lost their love for it. These Spanish Jews brought the trades they had specialized in back in Spain. They were doctors, pharmacists, traders, and shopkeepers, tin smiths, and leather workers. These Spanish Jews they lived in the Balkans while empires came and empires went. As borders changed and old countries became new again and a completely new country, Yugoslavia, was born in 1918 after the end of the first World War. These Sephardic Jews may have had a love for their homeland, but they also felt part of their Balkan societies. But there were others who didn't feel that way. These people wanted all Jews the women and children and all the old ones dead. In April 1941, it started. Nazi Germany invaded Yugoslavia, then dismembered it. The Nazis soon took Greece too. More than 100,000 Spanish-speaking Jews in the Balkans were shot, locked in gas vans, murdered in Croatian concentration camps, or sent to the Nazis' death camps in German-occupied Poland. During the Second World War, Turkey remained neutral. And although heavy taxes were levied against non-Muslims, these Jews were spared. And in Bulgaria, the government deported 12,000 Jews from Macedonia and Thracian Greece to their deaths. But 
it protected the 48,000 Jews who lived in Bulgaria itself. The Second World War ended in 1945. And of that 450 year heritage of the Sephardic Jews in the Balkans, it was only a tiny shadow of what it had been. Communist rule fell over much of these lands for 40 years. And then in 1992, war came again. And the Bosnian Serbs told the citizens of Sarajevo, people of different religions cannot live together. But the Spanish Jews of Sarajevo couldn't accept that. They remembered that their families were driven from their homeland in 1492. And then ethnic hatred murdered most of them in 1941 and 1942. But now, in 1992, on the 500th anniversary of the expulsion from Spain, they said, we travel another path. It is not the way of hate. They helped their entire city by creating a non-sectarian humanitarian aid agency. And they worked in the synagogue alongside Muslims and Serbian Orthodox and Catholic Croats. That is, after all, what democracies are all about. Living together. Helping each other. And always saying no to prejudice. This Spanish story is one that belongs to all of us. A lesson born 500 years ago. And it's a lesson we have to keep teaching ourselves even now.